We got a charger? Of course not, no. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah. Um, they're quite, cars mean to me that they're quite iconic in a way that everyone adds their own kind of style to them. Um, uh, yes, they are four wheels in a chassis, but I don't know, everyone has a different preference, I suppose. Uh, these days, it's not that difficult. Uh, back in the day, when I really first got involved, it was a text message and a Friday night cruise over a, at their bottleneck, it used to be. So, for the sake of a five, I used to be doing two runs of the TT course um, every morning. Well, I say every morning, two o'clock on a Saturday morning, because it was empty roads. But these days, you just go on Facebook, join a group, and then off you go. I got in cars because of my old man. He used to span her on a Mark II Escort. Um, I think he's still got them. I wouldn't know. Don't speak to him. <laughs> um, but yeah, just got into cars because it was either that, cars or motorbikes. So I chose the car scene. My first ever car was a Fiesta 1.3 Flight. And I couldn't get into the driver's side and I had to get through the boot every morning to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, every morning I was parked in ShopRite and you'd just see me climbing in over the back seats to get in and go to work. Uh, the options that are out there, to be honest. Um, there's no harm in getting a car standard because the manufacturer knows what he's doing. But this day and age you can go online, you can put your car on Google and you'll always find a part for it available. So, I'm sorry but the snow is just distracting me. <laughs> We should be all right. Yeah, my old man, more my old man, um, he was rallying. My mum used to rally. She was more co-driver, my dad was driver. Um, my granddad's had a lot of expensive cars, but he's worked hard for them. Um, and then, yeah, my old man was into rallying. So that's just where it went, really. Uh, other than that, we just got on with it. Yeah, there is. Um, everyone has an opinion, myself included. Um, not everyone's going to like your taste. Um, I think if you take a lot of criticism on board about your modifications or, you know, what you've done, um, then you, I hate to say it, but you're probably in the wrong game. Just keep, you know, um, there is a lot of people that will, keyboard warriors they're called now, but other than that, yeah, there's, yeah, just do what, just be you. It's all what I do. People don't like you, then no skin off your nose, is it? Best advice I'd give is this day and age. I'll probably keep repeating this, but join Facebook, join a community. If you if you know your mate drives, it could be like the car uh, car mod. What's it called now? Weekly modified meets. Get there, jump in a passenger seat, walk around, introduce yourself, and get involved. And before you know it, you're probably going home, looking at cars and looking to see what you can do with them. Yeah, yeah, I've done exactly the same. If I see someone else's new car, I am fully looking at Craigslist or eBay or, yeah, I change my car minds every, every, every week. <laughs> well, being a, an OG boy racer, um, it was exactly that. You would meet your mates at one place and you'd race to the other. And at two, three o'clock in the morning before social media became so big, everyone's now got a camera on their phone, so you've got to be careful. Um, but yeah, back in the day it was um, literally two o'clock meet over text message. You'd pull up one bit, make sure you got a bit of fuel and you'd race to the other. We used to have way back in the day uh, a, a race from point of air to the sound. So whoever got there the quickest, you know, took the bragging rights. There was, you couldn't brag about them on Facebook back then. So it was all over, meet, you know, over text and stuff. So Yes. Yeah, I think it's changed a hell of a lot. Um, the reasons why is because cars are getting nicer. Manufacturers are listening to people. You know, there's a lot more designers out there, whereas back in your day, your, your Fiesta flight looked like your Mazda 323. You know, your Saxo 
there was engine difference, your Peugeot 106s, now you've got people in BMWs, Evos, you know, so it's forever growing. Yeah, completely different. Ooh. So like just stress, you just go on a drive and forget about whatever or... In TT week, yeah, um, because I own TM Vinyl um, and that seems to be the busiest time of the year when the racers know that it's for two weeks of the year, yet they only order the stickers the night before they're, they're on the start line. So we've got to run, run them up um, to the grandstand. So as you, as you know, TT is, the mountain goes one way, so you can have a good fun if you know the roads. Um, yeah, back in the day when I was angry, I used to just turn the key and just go for a drive up around Jerby, north, north of the island. Loved it. Um, no speed limits, which is another bonus for the Isle of Man. Um, the only problem you've got to watch out for now is horses. So, yeah, open and off, there's a quite a fair few stables, and if you know they're there, they're, they're there, but there's quite a few people out a few times. Yes, I've um, got a couple of mates on Facebook and they are a defined rides, I think. So they were, they contacted me for stickers over through Facebook. And then myself, Micra, or Michael Hodgson, Seb, Catherine Crane, we took over Seb's car and we just went to one of their events and hand delivered the stickers. Um, amount of numbers over there compared to what the scene is now over here is about the same. Um, but the car, the car styling is completely different to over there than it is over here. Yeah, they've, because they've got the option of getting cars wrapped. Um, they've got a lot of options for body paint and body work. Um, and they can just literally go to a car auto shop, buy something off the shelf and come back in. Whereas living in the Isle of Man, you've got to wait two to three days for delivery, make sure someone's free, you know, it's just, it's, you are limited on this little rock. Uh, I'm going to say no, but Yes, <laughs> every car has a name. Um, my old Evo was called Edna. The WRC i20, I joke about it, but she's called Rosie. Um, yeah, the, each car has its own little quirk, and it, you, you know, when you sell it because you have to, or because you're just not driving it enough, you do get emotional, and then you, your mates tag you in pictures of them, you know, on your time memory and stuff like that. So when you see a picture, you think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Um, or the new owners have done a better job than the car than you have and you're like oh, yeah that was my plan but you know i can't i can't do anything about it um so yeah it it's just becomes part of the family doesn't it you know you've got to look after it you've got to put fuel in it yeah um, i refer to all my cars as girls so some people don't some people do um but yeah definitely become attached to them the they've all got their own little quirks haven't they <laughs> as in what naming your car or as in I'm just like with, with girls being involved well this is a, this is a top, this is a topic that's been covered by a few people on YouTube um, there was a, a there is a documentary on there that's it's a call for girls in the modified scene I think over over here they were about what 60% males 40% females I'd say At least, yeah, yeah. Um, in the UK completely different 50-50 down the middle, I'd say. But then, don't forget, us males, we like to show off and we like to have banter with people. Um, so we always have an opinion and write stuff, whereas the girls just keep themselves quiet, but they'll be able to meet. So to answer your question, no, because um, I've been to both here and UK car scene. But on a, on a public front, i.e. on Facebook, then, yeah, males look like there's more of them, but there is, there is girls on there. Uh, touch wood. No. Nope. <laughs> Not fully written off a car. Um, I've had people crash into me. Um, I've been close because I got too cocky. Um, but no, I've driven up a bank. Um, I haven't crashed, I've been in crashes. Um, if Tony puts up some rally footage of Tristan up here, then you'll know what I mean. Um, he says it was my fault, but I'm blaming him still. Um, but no, touch wood, I haven't actually been in a full-blown crash yet. Or ever, hopefully. Or ever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you never say never, do you? You never know what's on the corner. Yes. Yeah, this is the, this is the biggest problem, isn't it? Everyone 
I, I'm a reseller of BC coilovers and newly HSDs for coilovers as an example. Um, there's nothing stopping you going on eBay, spending 150 quid to 200 quid on coilovers. Yes, they're not the best and yes, they don't meet brands. Um, you know, people will have their opinion as I referred to before. But you can do everything on a budget if you know what you're doing. Um, most problem is people want to do everything at once and then that's where all the money goes. But if you're patient and you can wait a little bit, do a, wheels, do a set of wheels a month, suspension the next month, it's all in your budget. Um, yeah, just what I do usually when I had my old Evo was when it was come up to service time, I knew how much I had to keep around for the service because you were looking at 250 quid a corner. You know, that's for discs, pads, because you couldn't run your, your, your Delphi stuff on there. Um, but yeah, you just have to keep it on a budget and keep a thing. As long as you maintain them, they'll, they'll do it. But the initial costs are high, but then for the length you keep the car, then they'll work out separately. So like 600, 700 pound coilovers, you have the car for two years, it's only cost you 100, uh, 350 quid a year. If you work it like that, then yeah, that's how your budget works. Yeah, um, there's always that one guy or girl in, in the group that will come and try and wreck your events. I've experienced it myself, organising events or attending events. And unfortunately, they're just, they're just them. You can't, you can't change them. You can have a quiet word and ask them to leave. But they're just, it's just like adding fuel to the fire. They'll, they'll come back and do it again. Um, but you'll find that most times if someone's misbehaving at an event, a lot of people will have a word with them, you know, and then that's it. Um, I know I keep referring to it, but Facebook will take someone's name and shame, and then all of a sudden they're the world's worst enemy. So, yeah, it's uh, social media is a bad influence these days for the car scene, but it's also good for my aspect because I can make new relationships, um, I can sell stuff, and recommend people's advice and stuff. Uh, me personally, um, I would think this year has seen the, the Ironman car scene come back stronger, a hell of a lot stronger. Um, yourself doing documentaries like this, videos, you know, you can you can now flip your phone around, take a video, put it on YouTube, more people can see it. Um, yourself doing projects, getting in touch with me um, to help you out, which we did. Uh, Calum, who's now the uh, admin of one group is every Friday he's guaranteed he's he, he's made an event um, another thing I'd say is at the end of the day it's your car do what you want people are going to have an opinion on it you might not like it if you're happy with it stick at it um, and uh, um, another point is don't be scared to ask for help there's a lot of people out there that will like, give you help and if they, if they don't know they will ask someone else that will know and then you just go from there and then that way you can make relationships with said person, you know, friendships blossom. That's the that's good thing about cars. Um, everyone has one. Everyone's got an interest in them. Um, the younger self of me, I'd change it a bit. I'd go back and do a few things different than what I know now. Um, but yeah, just don't be afraid to ask. Get yourself involved in a Facebook group. Um, then, yeah, just go from there. Um, insurance is another factor. You know, if you're a young lad, just keep your options. Yes, it might be a, a one metre courser, but you're still driving, you know, you can still attend the events. If you don't drive, ask someone that does drive you that you know and just attend to the events. That's me, really. I'd, yeah, I'd, uh... No, I've got nothing more to say, really. I think hats off to everyone that's involved in all this. Thanks for coming down. Uh, good luck to what you do with this in the future. And uh, thanks for getting us involved. Thank you very much. No worries.